So I'm going to introduce Silent Witness, Mr. James Rothschild with Silent Witness, Arizona. Can you guys hear me? Because I yell too much. Is that an okay volume? This is Kim. We work together. Kim Neese. My name is Jamie Rothschild. We run the Silent Witness program, and there's not many of us who do that, and I have to apologize ahead of time. When we're done, she's going to run. She's got a relative that she needs to pick up at the airport, so if we take off, we're not trying to be rude. It's just getting her to the airport on time. So, um, But what we have to say won't take too long. It, has anyone ever heard of the Silent Witness program? Okay, I, I, I'm sorry to make you do your hands up because I hate it when people do it to me, but does everyone think it's a Phoenix Police Department program? Okay, well, I'm glad we're here. So Kim and I, and two detectives, is that warbly? Is that too loud? Do you want me not to use it? No, you're good. Use it? Okay. Kim and I and two other folks are Phoenix Police employees. So we have badges and guns. We're actually with the police department. Um, but you'll never see us in uniform because we serve all law enforcement agencies, police departments, the sheriff's departments, and now we've even partnered with the federal agencies in the valley. So if we wore a Phoenix police uniform and we go into a meeting in Goodyear or Glendale, they're going to kind of keep us at arm's length, another Phoenix program. So we're paid by Phoenix, but we serve all law enforcement agencies. So when you see us on TV or you hear us on the radio, you never hear Phoenix Police Department. I'm just telling you that we are employed by the Phoenix Police Department, and Phoenix is very generous in staffing the program. We'll tell you a little bit about the program. We'll tell you how it works. We'll tell you what it doesn't do. Uh, and we'll tell you about some of the things that it, it can do. So if I forget to tell you, and I'm just going to let me indulge me as we take a quick survey. I actually watch the news, and apparently I'm kind of a a, a lessening breed. Does anyone literally watch the news from 5 to 5.30, 6 to 6.30 anymore? The whole thing. Sports and everything. Okay. So apparently we are part of a lower breed because everyone else gets their news on their phone. So we didn't really take that into account. And what would happen is we found that we weren't getting the calls that we wanted because, and I, I'm not making this up, Donald Trump would tweet, Hillary Clinton would write a book. Anything that happened in the world would take, it would just dominate the news, and our stories were getting pushed to the bottom because we assumed that people actually sit and watch the news and read the newspaper, and they watch the news and they get their news differently now. So Kim, in March, reinvented the way that we uh, deliver our content to people. Because, uh, and I was walking around the Cronkite School one day, and not one, I say kid, but they're all younger than me, so they're all kids to me, but no one was looking up. They're all looking at their phones, and it occurred to me, they're still getting the news, they're just getting it differently. So what Kim did is she just reinvented the way that we push out information. So that it's still on the news, but it's also getting delivered through mobile content, and we really felt the impact of that. So if you took a Boeing 737, I think it is, and it's one of the slides we have, if you filled that up to capacity with felons, that's how many felons we took off the streets of the valley last year because Largely in part because Kim realized that people get the news differently and we made it more convenient for the people who help us. And it, 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 that's our visual. If you fill an airplane of felons, that's what we took off the street last year. And that's because the community worked with law enforcement and we did that through and with the media. So a little bit about the program. The program's almost 40 years old. But what we found is we constantly have to re-educate not just the community, not just the media, but our own detectives. Because as people come in or retire or start, some of the, I'm going to say kids, some of the kids that are police officers and they look like kids, they're not 40 years old. They weren't raised with some of the TV shows and the, and the advertising that we did through Silent Witness. So as we're educating the community and talking to the media, we're also talking to our own detectives. Because oftentimes, detectives from all agencies, they don't realize what a powerful tool this can be. And it can be an amazing tool, and I'll tell you how. Okay, so here's how the program works. Um, calling silent witness doesn't create a police report. So if you call and say, my neighbor was burglarized, that doesn't really help us because silent witness, we don't know who you are. Silent witness is when you have information about a crime 
and that information that would go to a police officer and they could follow up on it. So please keep that in mind as I talk. Because when you call, we don't know who you are. We have the equivalent of a rotary phone. I can't call you back and ask further information. I have to rely on, and we rely on, that information that you give us. Now, we've created a new app or gone to a service that gives us a new app where we can two-way communicate with you and it's shielded. We don't know who you are if you want to communicate with us, but oftentimes people don't want to. Sometimes they just want to give the information. So whether they call or they go on our website or even through the texting feature we have, we want to get as much information as possible. Now we never ever ever tell you what cases we solve, but I will tell you that this program took thousands and thousands and thousands of phone calls during the serial shooter investigation. And that information that came in through the community was critical to helping make that arrest but more importantly, it was critical because the community, nobody wants to be outed for giving information. So when you call Silent Witness, we don't know who you are. Like I said, we, it's a rotary phone basically. We get as much information as possible and I think almost all of our staff except one are sworn officers so they ask the right questions. So when you call, we don't know who you are. You're given a code name and if that information leads to an arrest, so you're asked to call back in about 30 days. If the information leads to an arrest, then essentially you tell us what bank, if it's one of our participating banks, you go into the bank, drive through, walk in, it doesn't matter. You go up to the cashier, we don't know who you are, so you give your code name and the cashier is going to hand you cash. It kind of looks like a bank robbery, right? You go in, <laughs> give a name, they look at it, they're already trained, they hand you cash and you walk out. And we don't want you to tell people when you're going or that you gave a tip to silent witness. That's very important. So when you're given that code name, that code number, we want you to hide it. They can walk you through how to hide it so that no one knows. Uh, and, and normally I do this as a trick question. I say to groups, hey, did you see the, the case where the person who called silent witness was outed? And every group, they're like, yeah, I saw that. There's always one person. That's never happened because we don't know who you are. And the challenge is when you call, if we need further information, if you don't operate through the two-way communication that's shielded, we don't know who you are. So we really need you to, to be patient with us, give as much information as you can. There is, when we're not in the office, we're not in the office right now, there is a call center in Texas that takes our calls, so 24-7, 365 days a year, you're gonna get a live person in English or Spanish. And if you're calling and our call center answers, please be patient because if you say 16th and Thomas, they don't know what that is. So they're gonna ask you some questions that might annoy you, just bear with them, please. Um, but what we want people to know is, there's a lot of times that people have information on someone who's wanted for a crime, even if a police report hasn't been filed. And if you get that to silent witness, we're gonna get that to whatever law enforcement agency is uh, responsible for looking into it. So you don't have to wait until you see a case on the news to think you can call. If you recognize someone from a case we put on the news, please call. But if you know that your neighbor's running a chop shop and you don't want to you know, go on radar, uh, look, we'll be real honest. Everyone loves their community action officers, but not everyone wants to be seen nowadays talking to the police. And I get that, especially if you're trying to make sure that your family's as safe as possible. Uh, we also have folks who uh, are in this country and maybe they weren't born here and they have a certain distrust of law enforcement but they want to make their community safer and I've talked to folks. Uh, we have people who just don't ever want anyone to know including their own family that they're working with the police and that's okay too. And as a little side note, there's two types of calls we get. Uh, I think my neighbor is selling drugs that's not a good example because that goes to our Drug Enforcement Bureau. I think my neighbor is using a chop, has a chop shop or, hey, um, this guy sells marijuana. He keeps it in a size 13 shoe. His nickname is Lil Snoopy. Here's his social security number. His favorite food is Doritos with cheese. And this is where he is Thursday mornings. Okay, that's a jilted lover. That's somebody in that person's life who's actually, per we get a lot of those. We also don't get a lot of, I don't want to say a lot, we get about half of the rewards get picked up. Can anyone please guess why only half the rewards get picked up? There's, there's just a couple reasons. Do what? Oh, so I had a lady yell at me in a meeting saying, you, gave, you give money to bad people. Ma'am, I don't, I don't know who's calling. I give money to people with information, but oftentimes it could be someone who maybe participated in the crime. You're absolutely right. Um, anyone else want to guess? Yes, sir. 
Yeah, so we, <laughs> thank you for that. We, uh, we do walk them through good places to hide that. There are some people who truly don't believe because if you look at your cell phone, everything is on your cell phone. You've seen the Facebook issues this week. There are some people who truly don't believe you can be anonymous. And there's one other group of people who call sometimes that don't pick up their money because they're in jail. We get people who call because somebody in the next cell maybe told them they did something and later they call us. And if they tell us, hey, I can't pick up my money for seven to 10 years, <laughs> then we can hold that money. Absolutely we can. Um, this program works well because it's a partnership. It's law enforcement, it's the community, but the way that we reach the community is through the media. And the media benefits because they have content to push out and we benefit because it doesn't cost us anything to ask the media for help. The only thing when I talked about, Kim and I are paid through the city, the only thing that some people didn't know, and, and Kim and I, by the way, because we're police officers, we're never gonna ask you for money. We have a board of about 20 or 30 community members who go out and do fundraisers because every dime that we pay out on rewards isn't funded by the department because you and many people would be absolutely mad if, to use, uh, your example, if somebody had a warrant and now I'm using your tax dollars to pay them, that would bother some people. So all the money that we pay out, we do a couple fundraisers a year, we use that money to pay out the community for tips and it works very, very well. Now I knew I kind of flew through there, so what am I missing? What's important to mention? Funny you should ask. So. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, some of my slides aren't are coming up, but the other side of our, our tipsters is we've gotten people that call that recognize that, that kid that just seemed troubled in high school or community college or college, and next thing you know, they look a little familiar on when you watch Sergeant Rothschild on Fox 10 Morning Show as uh, they're holding up a Circle K. So it's, you can meet people in all sorts of of walks of life. It's not, not the people that necessarily are coming to your house. Um, it, it can be any kind of person. And so that was my last point on what he had said. We have five different social media formats. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Instagram, oh, oh, LinkedIn. So we get people that follow us and message us. And one of the, the messages that comes through fairly often uh, privately is, Somebody asks, I see so much doom and gloom. I see so much crime. I, I just don't even know what to do. And, I, and they just seem frozen. And I get it because, because violence sells sometimes. The, the big fantastic stories sell. And uh, we are part of that machine, but we're also part of that solution. We, we provide an, uh, an outlet for people to start local because you're, you're not gonna solve the violent problems over in the Middle East or um, over in New York or Chicago, but you can start local. Um, we are purely a local uh, organization. We only work here in Maricopa County and in the, the Metro Valley area. Um, even though there's Crime Stopper programs all over the country, silent witness, we only work here in the Valley. So I encourage people, you know, get involved even locally here and that's how you, you feel like you're making a difference, because you are. Um, all of our board members that do the fundraisers, they're all local business people, citizens, um, people, some of them have been impacted by crime, um, others are just business leaders that want to make that difference without necessarily jumping on a, a, a larger um, nonprofit. So we have three ways. One obviously is uh, what Sergeant Rothschild talked about is um, if you do happen to recognize a, a suspect, give us a call um, or log on. Um, you can follow us on social media. Um, just the, the tweets and the support can help get us the bigger sponsors that, that help um, throughout, throughout our, our longevity. And then uh, participating, participating in our fundraisers, which the next one coming up is our trivia night, it's at Aunt Chilada, is not the one really convenient and close to you. It's the one up in Dreamy Draw. But um, it's Wednesday, April, 20, uh, April 18th. Uh, we will have great, some great live auction items as well as raffle items. Um, Fox 10, uh, they're a great supporter of ours and they have a, a behind the scenes tour where you get breakfast on the set, 
um, yeah, you meet some of the anchors that are there and you get a, a behind the scenes tour of, of what it's really like. And it, believe me, believe you me, he knows this too. It's not what you think. There's not a bunch of busyness going on back there, but I'm not going to blow the secret. So um, the next one's in the fall and that's the, our um, golf tournament for Catch a Crook um, golf tournament. And that's going to be October um, 26th. And then one of the things I like to point out is it's not just your, any donations, any support that you do give us by coming to our fundraisers or donating, it's not, it's certainly not, it doesn't just encompass the people that we have lost or the people that have been victims. Um, it's for future generations because you're all here at a community meeting, bec I'm assuming because you, you want to help continue keeping your community safe. Is that, um, so yeah, it's, it's also to make sure that for future generations that you're creating a good stability in your neighborhood and we certainly can help with that. So, uh, last but not least, th those are the five um, that I smoothly rattled off earlier. But that's, uh, so yeah, Facebook in particular, because I, I noticed a big presence uh, for Awatuki, for Tuki Talks on Facebook. So um, we would appreciate any of that support just by that, that, that click button, like, would be a, very much appreciated. So, uh, so thank you, Unless you wanna wrap it up? Yeah. Thank you. Um, just a couple quick things. So I spent a while in the community action world. You have really awesome community action officers here. And it's probably one of the better jobs in the department because you get to go out and you get to talk to folks who left the comfort of their home to be in a meeting, to hear about their, their neighborhood. But, you know, every, a lot of people care about their neighborhood and not a lot of people can or, or are a part of these things. So if you're willing, help us share this information. Kim talked about doom and gloom. Here's the reality. We have a lot of families who suffered loss. And so what we do is we bring them in and we give them a voice. Even if we don't solve their case, I take almost every set, well, a couple times a month, I take a grieving family and all the media comes in and whatever you've heard about the media and people, uh, you think that they're cold hearted, they treat our families like gold and they give those families a voice to ask the public for help solving their case. And way back when, uh, almost two years ago, when families wanted to seek justice, they would go out and do flyer handouts and candlelight vigils and all those things to get their family and friends together, and they should do that if that's what they want to do. But when you work through social media, they can really spread the word much easier simply just by hitting like or share, and we encourage them to do that. So if you ever encounter either a neighborhood group who wants to learn about the program or a family who suffered a loss, you can have them call us and we can work with them. Um, the term that, we, that people use that drives families crazy is they want to give them closure. We're not going to give them closure. Uh, when you lose a child, it's not closure. But what we can do is give them the gift of an arrest. And we have some, and I say mothers because we always try and get the mothers to come. Um, and the dads are 50-50 if they want to do this on camera. But when you see the heart of a mother talking about loss, it impacts people. Even if they're not going to solve the case, it just makes you realize how you know, awesome life is. Um, and so if you, if you know of someone who's suffered something and they want a voice, have them call us, please. We're going to put out uh, a case this weekend. This is just a gentle reminder. The case that we're going to, we normally put out like a, a convenience store robbery or something that's caught on film. And I don't know how people don't know when you go into a bank or a convenience store anymore that someone's recording you, but they give us a lot of content, so it's amazing. Uh, but this weekend, just a gentle reminder, we're going to put out a burglary where someone left their garage door open and they had great cameras. And to see these people in the garage rummaging through the vehicles and then uh, from the CAO world, we would tell people all the time, and I won't make you raise your hand on this one, but someone in this room doesn't lock that door leading into their house. Well, these guys opened the door to try and go in. Unfortunately, the alarm was set. So again, gentle reminder, garage door shut, doors locked. I know it's inconvenient, but please, please do that. Uh, before I wrap it up and turn it over to the park ranger staff, does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything that they want to talk about our program? We just wanted to give you kind of a brief overview. If you get nothing else out of it, please know you truly are anonymous and we need the information that you have. Your CAOs know how to contact us if you ever do have information, especially if information you don't want to put in a, in a setting. Uh, but help us, please, help us spread the word. If you know someone who would benefit from this, we're happy to come out and talk to them. And thank you for your time.